You can give an artist a brush pack and they'll paint for a day. But if you teach an artist to create their own brushes, it's really so you can do this. Hey everybody, I'm Daniel and learning to create your own Photoshop brushes is great because it'll be much more personal to your tastes as well as helping you to solve problems during your own illustrations and drawings. Before we jump into the video, I would like to give a quick shout out to HCubes who requested this brush tutorial. So now let's begin. To give you a very basic rundown, I've boiled down the process of how we will be creating brushes in three simple steps. The first one is creating the initial shape. The second one is tweaking all of the settings. And the third one is to finally save our brush. Now, it's very important that you realize at any point during the process, don't switch brushes. If you do, Photoshop will not remember your settings and they will simply vanish into the ether. You can save your brush by clicking down this little plus icon here instead. I want to start off by going through each of the different settings available to us in Photoshop and explaining what all of these will do when we create custom brushes. All I've done right now is I've selected the very basic default hard round brush and let's go over to this icon here and activate it by pressing F5 on your keyboard. Over on brush tip shape, we can just see a basic settings like the size. We can also see that if we squish down this little axis here, it will change the shape of our brush. We have roundness, hardness, and spacing. Before I get into it a little bit more, I just want to say that if you hover over any of these different settings here, uh, there will be a little bit of extra information that Photoshop will tell you. So in case you are curious about anything, hover over it and you'll be able to see what it does. The first setting we're going to take a look at is hardness. It's very self-explanatory, but just go ahead and drag this down. It's going to make my brush a lot more like an airbrush. And then if I just bring it back up, it will make it sharp and clean again. Spacing is another one that's pretty important. If I go ahead and just drag this little slider across, you can start to see that the brush itself is breaking up into these different circles. Think of it like a stamp. So every time I put down the brush to canvas, it's going to put a stamp down. Now, obviously, if the spacing is super, super clean and close together, then we get that continuous brush stroke. And this setting is something we're going to take a look at specifically when we start to make more special effects brushes later on in the video. To make sure any of our settings here are being applied to the brush, simply click on the little checkbox next to it. And then we can start to have a look at all of these different options within. Size jitter is basically if I just go ahead and drag that up. The little stamps that we have, if I just move this across, you can see it's just adding a little bit of variation within the size itself. Minimum diameter is just something else to tweak the shape of the little stamps. Angle jitter, same thing. Because right now we have a circle, um, we can't actually see the angle changing, but trust me, if you have more of like a blocky brush, it'll start to move across. One thing that I forgot to mention in shape dynamics is if you change control into pen pressure, you can start to see that we have a really nice tapered sort of effect to our brush and that we can just sort of adjust the minimum diameter, how much it tapers in. So if we want more of a marker kind of shape with a bit of roundness, we can do that. Or if we want it to be really, really nice and sharp, we can go ahead and change that as well. The next one over here in the panel is scattering. And you can kind of think of this as an extension of shape dynamics. If I go ahead and just drag this slider up here, you can start to see it's scattering all of the different circles across up and down and the different axes. So if I bring it all the way up, you can start to see the really interesting effects that we're starting to get just from that one setting. Now, texture is one that you'll most likely be using quite a lot as you create custom brushes, so it's important to get familiar with it. The first thing you might notice is this little drop down menu here with a bunch of images. These are just basically pre-made textures that Photoshop has saved. You can choose different ones from canvas textures to a bit of a wavy sand looking texture, maybe almost concrete, etc. Have a play around and see what works for you. For this demonstration, I'm just going to select this one right here. And these are different settings that control the actual size of the texture being applied to Photoshop. We can also change things like the brightness to see different effects we can get with how much the texture shows through and things of that nature. Over here where it says mode, we can just see that there are different layer styles as we would if we were just, you know, doing stuff in Photoshop. And we can just go down and have a look at the different effects that happen. It's, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. Really just do what works for you. 
uh, depth also does control the amount applied as well. If I go ahead and paint, you can see that we have a really nice canvasy looking texture to our brush. Texture after tip is important too, because if you unselect it, you can see a lot more of the texture shows through. And if we just hover over it, it just says set to blend the texture with each individual tip rather than on the entire stroke. And so that is another option for how we apply the texture to our brush. And now as a natural extension from texture, we have this option called dual brush. Dual brush is actually pretty cool because all it's doing is combining two different Photoshop brushes together. It's also got the same different blending styles as we saw in texture earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine on multiply. And if I go ahead and select any other brush I have in my library, you can see the little preview down here and uh, what it's doing to our brush, which is really, really interesting. We've also got some very, very unique results from this. Um, it really just depends whether or not you wanna go texture, dual brush, maybe a combination of both of them. Uh, so now I've got my dual brush, which is mixed in with this other brush I have and that canvas texture. Get some really, really cool results with that. Now that brings us to color dynamics. Now this is one that I like to use quite a bit myself because it just introduces a little bit more of a natural feeling in our brushes rather than something super digital and artificial. It's very self-explanatory too. Hue jitter just means how far the hue will go when I paint. So you can start to see that it's got a bit of purples in there, a little bit of green. If I go super extreme, then we're gonna go <laughs> something very, very much like this, which is a really intense rainbow color. Um, I like to keep it fairly subdued. Saturation, again, self-explanatory, how saturated the colors are. And the same thing for brightness as well. So brightness will introduce more of the tints rather than saturation or hue. Um, and then finally, we do have purity as well. We also have a drop down menu for control. You'll start to see a lot of these different drop downs in multiple different settings. They all do the same thing. Pen pressure is usually a good way to control it. Maybe not with color dynamics, uh, but the option is there just in case you wanna play around with that. If I go really, really crazy with all of it, you can see that we have something that's not even the color that we've picked, but you know what? This looks like a really fun way to entertain myself for a couple of hours. The next setting we're gonna have a look at is transfer. And this one is also very important when we come to painting in Photoshop. Now to explain something a little bit that eluded me for a couple of years is the difference between opacity and flow. So before we look at the brush settings here in this panel, I'm gonna bring your attention to up here in our menu where it says opacity and flow. Opacity, think of opacity as the overall general opaqueness of our brush. And flow is different because flow simply controls the speed at which the actual color is laid down. I'm gonna give you an example right now. If I bring my opacity down to 10%, and then I start painting and without lifting up my brush, you can start to see that it's got this, well, you know, 10% of the, uh, the blue that I've chosen. It's only when I lift my brush up and then I go down to paint again, you can start to see it has this doubling up, almost like you had a texture or something like that and you were drawing. If I do that with flow, go, go ahead and move this down to 10%. If I start going over itself, that is when the actual color will start to increase. So it might seem a little bit confusing. Um, it definitely took me a while to get used to the idea, but all you need to know is that opacity is the general opaqueness of the brush. And the reason that flow is good is that you can use it to build up multiple passes of the same area. Now you'll notice that in transfer, we do have settings for an opacity jitter and a flow jitter. And just changing these, just you know, very much like the shape dynamics one, will kind of add a little bit of randomness either in the opacity or the flow of the brush. Now, granted, truth be told, I can't really tell the difference most of the time when I'm changing these two settings, but it is there if you do want to experiment to get different results. One thing I will say about this particular setting, if you have pressure sensitivity turned on up here, it will not allow you to change anything. So if I go ahead and move opacity jitter to about 44% and let go, it's gonna pull it all the way back to zero. The same thing is if I change control from pen pressure into something like pen tilt and I go ahead and paint, as soon as I move around, it's going to revert back to pen pressure. All you have to do to get control of transfer is simply turn off the setting and then you will be able to tweak everything in here because they are both inherently tied. If I hit this, think of this almost like an override switch where now the actual pen sensitivity is determined by this 
rather than our transfer setting. I hope that makes sense. For this next example, I'm going to switch to a different brush here. So I've got this really interesting textured kind of grimy looking brush. Um, and the setting that we're going to be taking a look at is called brush pose. Basically, if I check it, there are all these different options here that says overwrite tilt X, Y and rotation. Now, I don't really use this that much, but I did read online that it's basically if you take this brush and then you paint, it's going to treat it as if you are using a mouse. So for whatever reason, if you wanted to use that, that's an option. Now, the next couple of settings such as noise, wet edges, build up, smoothing and protect texture don't have any sliders or anything like that. Instead, if I go ahead and select it, it's simply going to turn that particular feature on or off. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, noise just adds a little bit of noise to the image. So just, you know, more texture. Um, wet edges makes it feel a little bit more like watercolor just around the edges. It's very, very slight. Maybe the default round brush isn't the best example for this one. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really use any of these from, you know, basically noise down. I might do smoothing a little bit, but they're not really that important if you're creating custom brushes in Photoshop. So applying everything we've learned, I'm going to take the default round brush, go through all of the different settings and just see what kind of results we can get with all of the different things applied. I didn't really have a particular goal in mind when I was making this brush, except I just wanted to make it far enough from the initial round brush into something maybe a bit more scratchy with a bit more texture. And we ended up with something like this. For me personally, the first time I ever learnt about creating custom Photoshop brushes was actually in my first year at university. I remember sitting in class and we had to go through this character design exercise and I was painting this dude here that I called um, Adson Adaro. He was supposed to be a Jacques Cousteau kind of character, It's you know, just for an existing game that was already out there. But I do remember my tutor getting up, sitting next to me and we were just sort of going through different brush settings and playing around with it and I just, it opened up my mind to the idea of creating something specifically for the work that I was doing and that's the real benefit of creating your own Photoshop brushes. If you're a little bit unsure about where to start creating your own custom brushes, I have a couple of questions that might help you figure that out. The first one is, am I creating a painting brush? Second one is, am I creating a brush for sketching? The third one, do I need this brush for something more specific or something with special effects like smoke, clouds, water, etc. Number four, is the brush more opaque or more transparent? And number five, how much bite should it have? The point I'm trying to illustrate with these questions is that it really does help to have some kind of direction whenever you make a custom brush. Although, you know, experimentation is the key here and you really have to try things out as well. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet is define brush preset. This is really cool because this allows us to start off by creating initial shapes for our brush. All you have to do is draw some kind of shape on the canvas, make sure it's 100% black with no transparency, and then use the rectangular marquee selection tool, and then go to edit, define brush preset. From there, we can open up the brush panel settings using F5 and go ahead and tweak everything that I mentioned earlier on to get really nice custom brushes. To just go over the process, again, mentioned at the start of this video, creating brushes is in three very simple steps. The first one is creating the initial shape, the second one is tweaking all of the settings, and the third one is saving the brush. And yes, just in case you're curious, you can use photographs to actually make Photoshop brushes yourself, and I encourage everybody to go do this right now. Another really easy brush that you can make is a rake brush. And I've noticed that this is coming back in popularity quite a lot, especially for texture work. Very, very simple. All you have to do is make a bunch of um, circles going across horizontally. You can add however many you want and you can change the spacings and experiment with it. All I have to do is just grab that shape. Same thing, define brush preset. And it's just that simple. Here's a really nice one that I made. It's just for wood paneling and wood floorings and stuff like that. All you can see is I've just put a bunch of rectangles in a small, roughly square shape and then turned on color dynamics. Make sure that opacity is turned off so we're getting really crisp, hard edges. And then all I'm doing is just making down a really weird abstract pattern sort of thing. Uh, I noticed this kind of texture is really prevalent throughout Concept Art in Spider-Verse. So I wanted to go ahead and make something that could make my job a little bit easier when it came to texturing, specifically wood floors. All I'm doing now is I am grabbing that initial shape 
and then using the free transform tool to warp it into place. Now this one here is very similar to our wood flooring brush that I made earlier, except it's with bricks. So all I did was make the rectangular marquee selection, made a couple of bricks, duplicated it and offset the spacing. Once I have this very basic shape, same thing, define brush preset, except this time we can't paint because it's going to be very, very streaky. Instead, what I'm going to do is go down to spacing and then change the spacing until the actual brush duplicates itself enough to look like bricks. Uh, and this is why you would want to play around with this setting, or at least in this case. And I would use it exactly the same as the wood flooring. I would go ahead and turn on color dynamics, add a bit of wear and tear, and then basically just warp it into place for a wall. Another super simple brush you can make right now is a very nice grass brush. And all I'm doing is just drawing out a couple of different blades of grass here, making sure the spacing and the tapering feels pretty nice, and then defining brush preset. And from here, this is really where you want to play with, first of all, spacing, but in shape dynamics, you also want to play around with angle jitter and just a little bit of scattering as well. And by turning on color dynamics, you can also see that I'm adding a bit of color variation into the brush itself. Really easy to do and also really great for painting all kinds of foliage and that kind of thing. Now, with all of this tutorial stuff out of the way, the biggest piece of advice I could give you when creating custom brushes is honestly just to download a bunch that you find online, maybe some by your favorite artists or a really good brush pack and reverse engineer what you see from the brush. So right now I've got a couple by Patrick O'Keefe that I really enjoy using and I'm just kind of going through and having a look at, first of all, how the brush effects work, but also what kind of settings and combinations he's used to get those kinds of effects. And sometimes even tweaking brushes that you like to make it perfect for you and then saving it is totally a viable option as well. One final question that I do want to leave you is, how do you think this color halftone brush is made? The really interesting thing about this particular one I've seen compared to others is that it actually has pressure sensitivity. The harder I press down onto my tablet, the thicker the circles get and the more of an effect that we can actually have in our paintings. Really interesting and I'd love to hear your comments and theories. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope this video was able to bring you some new information for creating custom brushes in Photoshop. If you have any suggestions, please leave it down in the comments below. And if you would also like to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at Daniel Ang Art. Until next time, everyone, take care and stay safe.